Всем привет, я Ричард из обзора Старкового оружия, or Hi, I'm Richard and welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the M1895 Nagant revolver. One of the very few revolvers that could actually be suppressed and I'll show you why. Okay, the Nagant revolver has this unique feature where when you cock the hammer or if you're doing it in double action, either one, it will actually push the cylinder forward as it gets to the fully locked position of the hammer. And what that does is closes up the cylinder gap. Now it doesn't close it completely. There is still a little tiny bit of a gap there, but the ammo itself actually sticks out past the end of the cylinder and goes into the forcing cone on the barrel. Okay, I've got the cylinder removed there. I'm going to go ahead and take one of the rounds. They're also a pretty unique round too because you can see the projectile itself sits below the top of it there. There is a little crimp line here, a couple little dots that kind of keep the round from going too far in there. But when you put it in there, you can see it actually sticks out just a little bit past the end of the cylinder. And that little bit right there goes inside the forcing cone and causes it a, a gas seal. Now, the reason they invented this was not because they wanted it to be suppressed, but because they wanted to get a little more velocity out of the rounds. You lose a lot of gases out of that cylinder gap. So the idea behind this was you didn't lose any gases there and it provided a little more velocity. And usually about 75 feet per second extra in velocity as opposed to just a regular revolver with the cylinder gap. All right, before I get this thing loaded up, I'm going to show you how it comes apart. Now, it's a lot like a lot of the other older single action or some of the double action revolvers too. Anything, any of the revolvers with a loading gate. So your loading gate is right here on the side and it folds all the way open so you can drop your rounds in there. But before we do that, let's take a look at how it comes apart. You've got your center pin here, your ejector rod also. So you, you'll turn that half a turn and then you'll pull it out and it'll reach a point where it stops and then you rotate it to the side. So when you're done firing your rounds, you'll actually use this to eject your rounds and you'll take that and push it all the way out. Now it's not spring loaded like on some of the revolvers. So you actually have to pull it back each time you want to eject a round, which is kind of a pain. Uh, if the case doesn't swell too much, you can just tip it up and shake them out sometimes. But to take this thing apart, you roll that out of the way and there's the center pin is right here and you got to get it in just the right spot and you pull your center pin back you can pull it all the way out and then take and open up your loading gate which is already open and you pull your cylinder out now the center piece right here there's a bushing in there and it's spring loaded and what that is for is when the action pushes the cylinder forward to close it when it releases that spring in there pushes it back and you can take that out by You'll turn it and there's a pin on there. There's a little small pin right on the side of it and a little notch in there where it goes. And there's your spring right there. Uh, you take and clean it all out and everything when you're maintaining this revolver. And then just twist it a little bit and it should hold in there. When you put it back in, you gotta remember that it just it won't just pop right in. You gotta push that bushing in, which doesn't take a lot of effort. Get it lined up in there. Take your center pin or your base pin and you've got to notice the way this is cut on the end here so you get it in the right way. Put that in there, push it all the way up, rotate your ejector rod assembly back in there, go ahead and push it all the way back in, and you'll give it, it's about, oh, a quarter to a half a turn somewhere around there. You'll feel it kind of catch when you put it back in there. And then it's ready to go. There is no half cock position on here. Um, it's either full cocked or nothing, and it has an extremely heavy trigger pull on it. I'm not sure what the single action trigger pull is on it. I think it's around 12 pounds, but the double action trigger pull is about 20 pounds. So accidental discharges with this thing are pretty rare, but I mean, it, it takes a really conscious effort to do this. Now, when they first come out with these, there was a single action that they gave all their regular soldiers and the officer's models were a uh, double action or single action. This one was actually made in the Tula Arsenal in 1931. So this one's been around for a while. I do have the original pouch for it. Um, I've got the original cleaning tool that comes with it. I do not have the screwdriver. There was a screwdriver supposedly that came with these. And then you've got your ammo pouch right here on the front. Now this is a seven shot revolver. And when you get these little boxes of ammo, they come with 14 rounds in them. And they're mil military surplus. So you've got two rows in the ammo pouch there that hold seven rounds each. We're gonna go ahead and get seven rounds out of here, get this thing loaded up and give it a few shots and see what it does. 
All right, I've got the eyes and ears on because although it's suppressible, it is not suppressed and it's gonna be loud because it's a short barrel. But they load up just like any other revolver pretty much. You just flip that loading gate open, drop them right down in there, click it to the next one and keep dropping them in until you got it full. Seven rounds in the cylinder, so it's a lucky seven shot, seven shot six shooter. And they do drop in nicely. And then we'll give it a few tries. All right, I'm gonna do the first couple rounds single action. I'm gonna pull the hammer back, aim for the center target up there and see what it does. All right, that was all seven shots. And now it's time to eject them. Let's see if this thing will, if they'll come out on their own. No, not really. So remember to eject it, you take your center pin there and you turn it uh, half turn, pull it back, rotate it to the side a little bit, and then you'll click your cylinder over and you push it down. little sticky in there. There we go. Not the easiest or fastest one to do the reloads on. Not at all. There they go. Now the end of that case swells up a little bit when it goes into the end of the, uh, the forcing cone or the end of the barrel there. So that might cause a little bit of uh, the spread on it to get hung up on the front part of the cylinder there. I have seen people shoot these things. That would come out pretty easy. And they actually get lucky enough where they'll kind of fall out. This one didn't do that. But it functioned just like it should. And then just roll that right back over there, push it back in and give it that half turn right there and it's ready to go again once you reload it. All right, now the ammo for these things is not very easy to find. I don't know that anybody makes any modern reproduction. This is actually military surplus. They come 14 rounds in a box, two rows of seven in there. They're 762 by 38 millimeter R, which means rimmed or Russian, one of the two. Um, and I've heard that you can reload like 32 Smith & Wesson or 32 H&H &H Magnums and they will work, they will not work properly in there. You will have a cylinder gap because the case is not long enough to go up into the, uh, the uh, forcing cone on the barrel, so you won't get that benefit of it. Doesn't really matter. Um, I did manage to pick up uh, a little gun shop in Kentucky. I did manage to find, uh, I think, uh, 10 boxes of this stuff, so I went ahead and bought it all because, like I said, it's, it's tough to come across. At this time, all ammo is tough to come across. These are even tougher. I'm going to go ahead and put seven more rounds in there, but this time I'm going to fire them double action at the target up there. The single action ones I did, um, it's cold out here and uh, I'm a little shaky, so the accuracy was not that great. All seven of them did actually hit my target, which is just one of the little small bore rifle targets I've been using. And they did okay, and this is a military weapon, so it's not a precision uh, marksman's type revolver. It is a military weapon and it's made to, you know, fire at the target. You're not gonna win any uh, marksmanship competitions, I wouldn't think with this. Maybe you could, if you're a better shot than me, go for it. But it's just a neat revolver. All right, we're gonna experience that 20 pound trigger pull and fire these double actions and see how it does. That was it. It's not bad. You can definitely tell it's a heavy trigger pull, and it really is. And I'm pretty sure I got all seven of those. I probably did better with the double action than I did with the single action on there.
but let's go take a look at the target anyways. Okay, it actually looks like I might have missed twice on there somewhere. Who knows where they went? It could be in one of these bay open holes here because I still have not replaced these boards yet. But it, it is effective. This was, like I said, a military weapon, so it was a human-sized target is what you were shooting at with these things. And that is definitely uh, within the kill zone, the, the 10 ring on the silhouette target. So it does what it's supposed to do. And other than the really heavy trigger pull, it does fine. All right, we're gonna see if this second round of uh, rounds comes out of here any better. Again, the little half twist, roll it out of the way and open the loading gate, click it into position. There we go. That takes quite the effort to get them out. And like I said, I've seen people eject them. That one come out easy. Yeah, that's not too bad. Maybe uh, there were some little hotter rounds in there and uh, no, it won't shake out, but, and they may have swelled up a little bit more, but. All right, that's all seven rounds. Like any other revolver, they're pretty easy to keep clean. Disassembly is not a pain, even with this one. And really, I have disassembled this even further by taking the, uh, the side plate off of there and you can get in there and clean everything up. And they're really not a complex design. And they, they were easy to manufacture back then and they made a bunch of them. I think they were making something like 20,000 a year and from 1895 until I think somewhere in the 40s or 50s is when they actually stopped manufacturing these. And a lot of these were in use by different governments around the world up until I want to say 2013, somewhere around there. So they've had a really long life. There's plenty of parts available, at least in the European countries where they were manufactured and used most widely anyways. But uh, it's a pretty cool gun. Uh, fixed sights on it, just the groove in the back, the fixed sight on the front. You could adjust it by drifting it, but that's gonna be about it. Got a crazy looking long firing pin on it there, but it functions, it does what it's supposed to do. And it does it pretty well. Beechwood grip on it, checkered, hand checkered on there. And uh, it's not uncomfortable to hold either and it's not uncomfortable to shoot. Pretty good little uh, revolver. Anyways, thanks for taking a look at the M1885 with me, 95, the Nagant revolver, made by Leon Nagant, a Belgium inventor, and um, pretty cool little gun. Anyways, if you could hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos, hit this button right here to subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for taking a look at the Nagant revolver with me.